pretty cool. Six armor's a lot, though. Yeah. I mean, uh, 1,400 gold for a Deso minus the damage, sure, but armor is going to be very nice. Yeah. So we shall see. Yeah. You don't have the that dagger, begins. I suppose, to set up for the Mystic Flare, but... We have a brawl over these runes. Slark, not the best level one fighter in. Shopify have numbers here. Get some really good damage in, and they're going to get the first blood. Oh, and they're aggro tri-laning, it looks like, as well. They they're going to send <laughs> Sableye up top lane. So they're trying to dodge the potential Slark Underlord matchup and trying to get aggressive in the face of Slark. And I mean, it's already off to a great start. And we, we see yeah. that they're committing now to this lane bottom, importantly. So Yutori is already TP'd, and they're aware of this. So Shopify, they'll be able to get the lane set up that they want. Yeah, and I think that's one of the coolest things about the new gate is that you can do these level one tri lanes and then just suddenly you go swap into dual lanes. And also all, all of that silliness where, you know, you want to get a certain matchup in your side lanes and, you know, your carrier offlaners are like running across the map or jungling. That's kind of gone now, which I think is ultimately a good thing because that stuff was pretty clowny at times when it happened. Um, so it's nice to see that, you know, they just, okay, let's, let's get rid of the clowniness where these heroes aren't playing Dota and just give them a free TP from one side to the other. I just watched Crit use Blast Off to annoy Yutoro and, and force him to reuse the gate. A couple of seconds nice. wasted, so... Uh, looks like Sableye at the moment's going to stick around top. They've had plenty of time to re-swap the lanes if they wanted to, so... They're yeah. potentially still happy with the setup they've got. Perhaps well, Magnus has come back down bottom now. All of these movements are being scouted. Double Observer Ward on the, the bottom gate. Both teams seeing all these TPs across the map. Have three heroes down bottom. Potentially, if Collapse steps up too far, they are going to go for this kill. He's still level one, so no points in the skewer. Means he's definitely a potential kill if they can get like level two on CM. Yeah, they got level two CM now. Quick just left though, so maybe yeah. without the techies, they won't be able to play too aggressive for Shopify. But. Yeah, the, the one lane that's static right now, it, it, it's mid. It's a, it's a Ricky versus the Lesh. Looks oh, like, yeah. honestly, to start, it's pretty solid for, for low. He's got a bunch of creeps going under the tower as well. So if he's able to see us accordingly, should be ahead of, of Arbed. But it's a, a early ring of health for, for low, which I do believe I actually saw um, Quinn go earlier on as well to, to play versus the Lesh. Yep. So maybe it's just this in particular thing in this matchup. I think it makes sense. You're not really a good bottle hero. So this is just... Over the course of like the first 10 minutes of the game, you get more health regen from a ring of health than you do a bottle. You can build into some nice things later on, so. Some good early sustain, and basically what you have to get as a Ricky here. I mean, he's playing around, he's got 14 health regen. Like, Ricky's base health regen is already pretty insane, so you combine him with a ring of health, and that's how you can actually play as a mid laner. So, who do you feel like is really happy with the setup that we got in the side lanes? Like, even though that the Underlord's matching up into the Slark, is it going to be a little bit different? The fact that Sableye is... Wait, is he actually going to go down? What's going on? Nice jump out from nice your Going to be able to dodge the blast off, and meanwhile, Mira is just freely being able to spell cast on the left side. He will still go down, but of course, you get the kill onto Sableye before your death. Crit going to pick himself up a uh, little Lotus for his efforts, but uh, I think... I don't think it favors anyone necessarily. I think it's going to come down to like, you know, the outplays in these lanes, like plays like that up top. Like, you know, both he sides died. have kill threat up there. You know, it's Slark is getting the matchup he wants as far as playing to the Underlord, but it's still a very tough lane. Techie's Underlord with the AOE spam. Until Tech, yeah. until Slark gets his level six, like he's just going to be in for a rough time. You can see he's just instantly getting nuked down to less than 100 health here. Roots even trying to find the angle for the blast off as well inside yeah. the tree line. And they're just chasing him under the tower, so we can't freely see us. We'll feed his Cory away, but Mira's probably going to go down yeah. regardless. More swipe. Hey. Really easy kill. They did all that without even drawing tower aggro. That, that was the crazy thing. They were just playing around that tower aggro absolutely perfectly with the creeps there and get themselves a, a basically a free Skyrath kill. So he's going to be, he's got no TP when he respawns. So he's going to wait, walk to lane 30 seconds before TP's back, which means Yator is just mm. completely alone. So I guess to go back to your question, it seems that, you know, Shopify are happy with the lane setup for now. Bottom lane, screw onto the tower, TZ though. Able to get the jump away. So they take a decent chunk of damage. Looks like it's not going to be a concern though for the PA. Slane should be able to 
We shove out into Shopify's favor with a creepy equilibrium. Might even be able to get the hard cam pull as well. Yeah, that all getting very close to his cornucopia, so that's going to be his health regen for the lane. Do you, do you rate this name as a, as a new item? The name, no. No, you don't <laughs> like it? Really? <laughs> no. <laughs> as a, that is the first time I've ever said cornucopia as a, a Dota castle. I never thought that's a word that I would ever use in my, my vernacular. Oh. Uh, that, oh, all right. Oh, <laughs> I'm a hater. That's a, I mean, that's a big word you use in the vernacular. Cornucopia is out of yeah, yeah. I don't that, know. That, that's what Dota's doing to me. It's making me all freaking elegant. And, <laughs> oh, I thought with Diadem days, is the elegant other new one, general. you know? Dota does some... Uh, let's let's not let's I mean, we could do that with so many items. Let's let's not go back to the same one Let's not the, beat the dead horse. It's 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 dead. It's dead already. Let's just leave it. It's ages Your Dagon Dagon. You. Yeah, we could we could go through a lot of them. Oh We got other things though. I mean crypt. It's a uh, early rotation through the rift collapse pretty survival under the tower and <laughs> He's probably gonna go down still nonetheless, but at least he gets a kill. Fly draws the aggro as well. I mean, the big thing with all that going on is Arbid goes down mid lane though to Lal, and I think a rotation out of Mirror Sky Mage as well. Yeah, that's uh, a big find, giving this Ricky some momentum for his early game start. They're gonna get another kill in this bottom lane for the Shopify side. Does get the PA very low here, but Chen kill in this PA lane has gone incredibly well for Shopify. So this incredible new item called the Cornucopia, a great new name for it. I, the damage in lane, I really wonder if we're going to start seeing people just go for it first instead of some others. Like, sometimes there's value in, like, say, Troll with the Battle Fury build-up. You like the Perseverance prior because of the, the mana to be able to save for your axes. Sometimes you see people and they need the damage with the Broadsword or the Claymore, but... Yeah, yep. The Cornucopia is going to be prioritized over some of the other ones, as we do see Arbed. He's looking to try and get some revenge down bottom instead. They will have plenty of time to react, though, from Spirit if they would like to, but uh, this at least attempt from Shopify is not going to work out at the moment. It does feel like, you know, it's a decent buff to Battle Fury, just like, you know, a bit of a cheaper build-up. Like, you know, it's basically a better Perseverance. The only downside is, like, Ring of Health in the past, like, it's a cheaper item, so you can get that regen earlier, so you have to survive to get 12... Dyer's getting 1,200 gold is a lot harder than getting that, you know, 900 gold. Once you get there, you're really happy with the stats it gives you. Whoa, 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 what's this? Is deep behind the tower collapse. Okay. Oh, okay. They're probably going to turn to Maposhka, though. The blast off. It's plenty of damage to secure with a kill, and now Mira's in some trouble as well. But maybe Lyle can look to clean up. He's used oh, all his blue strike charges. How is he going to escape from this? Oh, Lal, too heavy of a commitment. Now collapse as well. He's getting chased down from Arteezy too. They've got plenty of slows to hold him down. Skew is there to work with, but he's just maybe going to try and kill someone before they get him in return. And well, he'll be able to do so successfully. And he's pretty tanky with his Vanguard. The Vanguards are coming up, and Yator is going to look to join as well. Collapse makes some stick charges. Can he survive long enough for the skew up? That will not be the case, but the cleanup queue has arrived. Yator getting some much needed essence. I I don't know if he wins the man fight versus the Underlord, though. Shadow Dance going to be activated. They're fighting on top of the Firestorm, and as soon as the dance expires, Radiant Yator won't be able to stick around. I'm definitely getting punished, though, for sticking around a bit too long, chasing too long, really wanting that Magnus kill, but I quickly learned that, hey, Vanguard is, yeah, a pretty good item right now. Get him. So definitely something that has to be respected there. The PA, you know, not hitting hard enough, basically tickling into the Vanguard, and... They lose the techies and a bit more, even though they do end up bringing down the Magnus. Just not really worth it, given that, you know, that was a five hero commitment. It yeah. started off well, but they just kind of, you know, took a bit too long to get that extra kill and lost a bit of farm because of it. Dyer's top yeah, I think is the, under really attack. the big thing for me is that was that first move as well from Lal. And, and we saw he wasn't able to capitalize. And in fact, Arbet, he was. So yeah. getting him a little bit closer towards the Bloodstone. And I feel like this Ricky is not a hero that's going to play well from behind. So... You need to capitalize on every single early movement you can make. 
Yeah, I think the, the big thing there is like both mid laners like rotate in at like similar times, but uh, Shopify is able to get their top laner, the Underlord, in instantly because of Dark Rift. Whereas Slark, he can't, he slowly shows up a bit later for some cleanup, but it's also just not really Slark's job to show up to these early fights. So if Shopify want to bring five here to take a fight, I think Spirit just have to like cut their losses. Like, you know, it's like, okay, I, we can't really be taking. 5v5s. We don't even, we don't we definitely don't want to take like 3v5s, 4v5s. Like, we just need to wait for our Slark to at least finish an Echo Saber, get that wine item, then Dyer's we can consider bringing him to these, these fights where Shopify like overcommit a bit. Oh. Radiant's bottom tower. Looks like Tower is going to end up going down. The tour is a little bit alone. The team is starting to smoke towards him. Very nice scan though from Die. Great read from Shopify. Trying to see what they could do as far as maybe killing a Slark, but quickly think better of it. Still in the neighborhood here. And this blur being used very effectively to kind of scout while without popping it, but eventually Cheesy realized, eh, it's just time. Just gotta finish my battle fury now. I need to try and force something that's gonna be very difficult to execute. I guess at least the smoke from Spirit, they're able to lay down a deep observe ward, so maybe next time this maneuver might be able to pay out for them. Because you, you you are looking to try and blow Dyer's heroes up now. That mirror has that level six. There is a lot of kill threat. And they might be gearing towards our bed mid, but... Sable has come try and TP in. They'll bring some extra numbers as well. Flies isolated. Spirit, they're going to be able to get the easy kill into the Crystal Maid, and they'll Delta split away as well. Our bed should be able to easily catch up to Mira. Uh, another trade of support. All right, they just feed a Kari away. <laughs> yeah, really, both teams posturing for these ancient stacks that have been made for Arteezy. That's why Spirit wanted to get in that deep ward and really contest this. But pretty hard to kind of fight early on into, I think, Shopify's lineup. Like, all you need is, like, Unlord to be there. He just acts as this big, beefy wall, drops the Firestorm down. You can't really fight into it. You're forced to disengage and... PA can pretty easily just take the ancient stacks as a result. This could be very interesting build from Collapse. I just want to hold that for them. Are they gearing up to save it? Then do his so difficult to kill. Mira doesn't have the Mystic Flare as well. They're going to try and TP Collapse in though. RP is at the ready. He's going to try and find an angle for it. It's just up to one. And it looks like Crit's going to try to shot them as well. Sable is live enough fly. Oh man. Look at the freeze. He filled damage fly. Not enough. Collapse might still go down to the Sticky Bomb. Just survives 40 health. Collapse is okay with the strength threads. Ulti's like that. I feel like Fly's robbed. Like, come on, you should at least get one kill. He just did like 2k plus damage just with that one freezing field. And they're gonna rift away. Heading uh, back to Fountain just to heal up. Okay, just using it for a quick little Fountain trip. I mean, that's the thing. This, there's so much different utility and ways to use this ultimate. And even just for a quick little Fountain trip to really force the issue around this mid lane to come back healthy. And they know while doing this by being healthy, they're creating all this space and room for Arteezy just to free farm away in the jungle. Oh, whoa, whoa, that's a lot that's, of damage. Uh, yeah. Okay, and now Lars already jumping for another. Should be able to slow down, fly, and catch up to him in the end. Some much needed gold is going to be given over to Lars to getting close to the fusel. Now, crit, he popped out of the tree line. So, more perma agi as well for Gatoru. And well, the previous fight looked pretty decent with Shopify being able to reset away from the RP, but the three heroes just bleeding their lives mid lane. Spirit are very happy with that. Yeah. And it wasn't like it was any kind of surprise maneuver or anything like that. It was just Shopify getting a bit overconfident about how strong specifically their Underlord is. It was like, okay, we rift back to base, we come back, we're full health. I can just kind of put myself on the high ground and nuke down some waves, but bring everybody, including the Slark. That's the big thing there is like, you know, with just this Echo Saber, the Mutora showing up to these fights is well worth it. And Arteezy finishing off some good farm in the jungle while all that was going on. That's kind of the trade-off there. But definitely a fight that I think Shopify are probably thinking, yeah, we, we probably didn't need a force set. Not without a PA. Both sides are making a move across the map. It's going to be mid that Radiance the first mid fight will break Center out. Attack. So simultaneously back to the right side, Arteezy. Great use of the blur. Radiant structure is more than okay. So took the stack, got the ancient farm at the right side, got the wisdom room as well. So already Arteezy's farming patterns are on point with the new patch. Radiant's he just found like a double stack of ancients and like a triple stack, and then he got another Radiant's ancient camp right after. So this this new 
Dire and Radiant Triangles with double Ancients is so good for some of these Ancient Farmers. Ooh, Toro. Yeah. He's going to take... Okay, not going to be able to take the Rift now. Okay, and Bounce was already used. Arteezy was able to block that, so... <laughs> you got some really big PA issues. Arteezy top of the net worth by a long shot, and Yatoro is continuing to have a rough game. And this is not like this matchup is is too ideal for the Slark as well as this game goes on. I nobody keeps up with a, a PA in terms of farm and in terms of late game. I like how do you deal with a super farm PA? This PA is gonna be like I think give it like ten minutes. I think PA is gonna be like five K net worth ahead of everyone in this game. Uh, with the battle here. And maybe he tr maybe he prioritizes joining fights and not continuing just to like play super greedy with how strong he is. But yeah, this this PA is a big issue, and I don't see a, a, a any kind of immediate solution on the spirit side. They're gonna have to take some good fights, play around like you know their ultis, their brawling, their smokes, and just try and get basically just chain together a bunch of good kind of pickoffs and kills, yeah. and ideally some objectives to get them some good map control. And for, for usually Slark's lineup, this 15 to 20 minutes is where they shine. This is that next big night time where you want to try and room and get all the pickoffs. And well, this is definitely one of them with the kill into crit. They should be able to find the T1 tower as well. But they need to keep going. Even without this scepter completed right now for Yutoro, you need to keep hunting on the map. You cannot allow Shopify to play this farm game. Yeah, it's, it's very easy. You look at their draft and it's like Slark plus Ricky. These are, you know, they're assassin heroes. And you've got a Skyrath mage, which is also kind of like just a support that specializes in doing damage and getting kills. They're not looking to like team fight, get bulky. They just want to snipe heroes and then back off and farm. Just keep sniping hero after hero. It's not, there's no five manning. There's no, you know, let's force this tower and just right click it slowly. Like they don't take objectives well, other than like maybe Roshan with their physical damage. Even that they don't take particularly well. So they've got to use, get some good vision up, you know, use the Ricky invis to scout and just keep trying to find these pickoffs. They can't afford to slow down here and let PA just storm ahead in terms of net worth. I mean, they're, they're doing that though. We see where Lyle's yeah, positioning, yeah. like Mira's playing behind them as well, but they're just Radiant they're, they're just a little bit too late. Like Artizi's always one step ahead and you know, Shopify, they're actually trying to gear up for a defense here. Sableite's going to try and start with stalling this push out. I mean, well, they might run it to Mira first, but the smoke's going to pop with that cliff ward. They're going to have plenty of time to react. How are they going to take the team fight? Of course, this is big RP potential, but Sableye, he's going to be able to hold the Magnus into place, and oh, but they're just going to expend Mira. They recognize that that's not a fight with how it started. They want to continue on with, so they're going to just try and cut their losses at one. Yeah, they can't really take these 5v5s. I mean, they want to force these fights in game. It's just a very hard play style to not just execute, but like if your opponents play around it, like there's no way to like force these kills to happen. You're kind of relying a little bit on mistakes or your opponents getting a little bit greedy uh, with their farming patterns. Hang on, they're common. They are killing these supports again and again. You get some 5v3 fights if you kill supports. Might not have uh, Lyle in trouble, yeah. The fight. Oh, be able to kill him off simultaneously though, you tore it. Just with the two, they're going to struggle. Yutoro does have the Scepter now. So let's see what he's able to do off the back of that. RP still at the ready as well, but it looks like with the 5v4 that Shopify have now, they're just splitting away. Parasite hunting. He's going to be able to catch out Crit inside the tree line. Nothing really much Artiz is able to do, but Yutoro is thinking twice about making this attempt. It wasn't clean. He wasn't able to get the kill and get out before the rest of the reinforcements showed up. Here, see how tough of a game this is for the Shopify supports. They're kind of food, like playing into Slark and Ricky. This is like a support nightmare. Two of the worst heroes, especially if you ask, you know, Wait, they're making, new players. They're making a go for uh, Arteezy. Yeah. Oh, just oh, all right. I mean, that's the Mystic player damage. They've been waiting for an opportunity to use that the entirety of the game. And finally, they're able to bring down Arteezy. His first death of the game. He went that Desolator out, so he didn't have the BKB to play with. And it was still just a trade for the Ricky. Uh, obviously a win when you're killing the top net worth hero, but top tower has been you see shop fire, they're like, okay, not not ideal, but we get the trade and we immediately get this top tier one tower, although also denied, so small victories for Spirit, but you can just see how strong this Shopify draft is where, you know, they lose their mega farm carry and then they're like, eh, it's fine. We'll just push forward, get a tower, back off and keep farming. Like there's just too many options for them in terms of like scaling and survivability on their three cores. 
but there, there's still ways Spirit can take these fights. We see how easily they eat up these supports. Like, I think Shopify desperately need to try and get some farm in their supports. So, you know, they're going to be praying for, like, Philosopher's Stones for the CM, uh, as well as Techies. I think those, th those that would be, like, a huge item, because getting items to stay alive is crucial, because they're the number one targets that Spirit want to kill first. Yeah, and we, we see Spirit, they've been playing very active with a couple of their heroes, but one person who hasn't been with them is Maposhka. And this Chen is farming up a storm. This is mech drums already completed. We know with all, all his aura items, is a pretty decent support to be able to scale into a lot of the team fights. So you know, we'll see what he's going to be able to add very shortly once we do get these 5 on 5 fights. Oh, calma lang, ah, calma. Relax lang. Relax lang. Things slowing down a bit here in the mid game. It's now daytime once again, making maybe some of these movements a little bit trickier for Spirit. Not having that nighttime for the Slark to play around, but instead they're going to smoke. Try and maybe use this Skywrath to, to lead. This is a scary spot. Up on the high ground, they've got the advantage. They get a Yotoros on the low ground. They see him, though. They know exactly what this well, is. Like. They're going to make the attempt onto Arbid. They miss it. Play lay it down. Arbid's going to get blown up. So no ledge for a lot of their damage. Collapse finds an angle into the middle. Up the on to two, but Yotoros on the outskirts. So the Slark's not getting full use out of the ultimate. Finally, he's going to find an angle to pounce in. And, well, this is the team fight that Spirit have been waiting for. Three go down. Make it a fourth as well as finally spirit get a five on five where they excel in yeah just having the vision advantage i mean and really it wasn't like they had a ward advantage or any kind of scouting it was just ricky who just managed like you know shopify aren't expecting to get jumped there you know they don't have a sentry down because they're behind the tier one tower but all you have to do is scout out a key target in the less track and ricky's like okay i'm jumping i've got my shard plus the mystic flare for for enough damage so less track just gets you know full to zero without really dishing out any damage and once the lesh is dead that's most of shopify's damage down until pa gets a bkb that's just not a fight they're interested in taking um and yeah these fights really come down to like who's gonna be the one who, who starts the fight if shopify the one getting the jump they can you know do fine but it's easy oh, yeah he... he's worried about Rohan, maybe no RP, that was really huge for Spirit in this previous fight. They're going to see how TG separated from the team. Oh, easy. He's going to get blown up before they ever react fast enough. And I'll say, well, they're going to try and block him away from the rift. Get back through, but he won't be able to. A Shopify Rebellion just bleeding a couple of kills in the past minutes in our Spirit. They're going to be able to find first rows uncontested. Yeah, and bleeding self-inflicted wounds there, really. Arteezy was just chilling on the high ground. He didn't really have any business being there. He should have just maybe stuck around the top lane, but he reveals his position. They hadn't even seen him. He's like, I'm just going to dagger it. And as soon as he daggers, Spirit's like, what? You're, you're here alone? We'll go on you. Uh, and that has a domino effect where Underlord falls up, thinking he's got to go in, that they can take this fight, but... You can't kind of trickle in one by one, not against a, a draft as strong as Spirits where they've got all this kind of hero killing potential. You've got to go about it as five. Ever since RTT got this Desolate of this game, it's just a little bit awkward since. We, we haven't Dying really been able to see the value of it, or I should say the power of it so far, I should say, before the BKB. Yep. And he, he's got that item queued up, but you've got a huge window now for Spirit. This is a Boots of Bearing completed on uh, on the Poshka as well. So one successful fight, and these buildings are going to fall incredibly fast. Yeah, yeah, they get the, the Tormentor, and they're just kind of ramping up on the spirit side. Like, the Chen Creeps giving them all these extra useful auras, extra spells, stuff like Ice Armor. Um, you know, against the, the PA can even be useful on from the Ogre Frost Mage. So there's just a lot of useful utility things that spirit, you know, they, it doesn't look like they have much team fight outside the Magnus, but, you know, with the Chen having all these items and, you know, these creeps getting upgraded as time goes on, there is some pretty good, like, team fighting potential now, particularly with an Aegis in hand. What to keep in mind too is Shopify, they've already got a four staff on fly and there's one getting queued up for crit as well, but if you're going on the cause, you're not going to be able to use these inside the smoke cloud on law. So yes, they'll be great for your own individual purposes, but if cores are caught out inside this smoke cloud, they will be killed off. Especially now Collapse has got that blink in level 15 as well, so extra damage. And then who is able to catch on inside the RP, and he's been pretty solid so far this game, and he's got a blink to work with. 
another Manta though queued up. So very interesting. A lot of stats for the Universal Hero. I have not seen him go down the Spirit Vessel build in his uh, pub games that I saw recently with him playing the Magnus, but he's been liking this Manta. I mean, that seems to be the way most of these universal heroes are played where you're, you know, Dyer's if you're not like a full-on support, you want to get as much stats as possible since Dyer's you're getting damage from all stats, you know? Yes. Every single stat you get is giving you a little bit of damage and just better scaling. And you, otherwise, you just, you know, you end up too squishy and stuff if you don't go for these big stat items. All right, this is huge. They, they've got BKB and double damage from bottom Smoke of the last positioning. Yeah. Dust does actually clip him. Okay. With. He's gonna try and activate it. Oh, collapse! Over the top of the tree line, RP on three, but where's the fourth? They're gonna be a little bit too late to get full usage out of the RP. And while he's caught out as well, Blink's still up and ready to work with. Tries to get some separation, but Artesi jumps further behind the tier two tower. PA knows no way to stop, cleans up two members instantly. And now he's gonna be looking for some more valuable targets as well as Mira. The sky is gonna fall along with his fellow brother. Yeah. hit a 40. Another jump on the high ground. The crits are raining down as collapse. He too will be a result of the double damage rune. Radiant's what a perfect timing to shot the fire to get this power rune along with the BKB on the Phantom Assassin. Yeah, just absolute dream timing. Spirit didn't see it coming and even with, and like Mangus shows up, gets a Radiant's decent RP, but they don't have the numbers or the full up, so it, it kind of slows down. Uh, Shopify there, but as soon as Radiant's that RP somewhere is off, PA is just going in, chasing even further, almost kills the Slark there with a crit cleave that gets him down to like 150-ish health. Just the perfect timing, and you know, that's about as good as it gets. So they, they win that big fight. The game is still very tricky for Shopify, but a 4,000 gold swing just off of that one fight. Having the Orb of Destruction to go with the Battle Fury BKB Deso on Arteezy is just absolutely monstrous, but this game's still very much in the balance here, so... It does feel like it really is going to come down to the execution over the next 5-10 minutes and how teams play around that next Roshan. But still, you've got a big PA issue. Arteezy just got yeah. two full levels off the back of that fight, so he's... I mean, the ultimate's maxed out now, so more damage, super close to that level 20 as well, which is going to make fighting even more difficult for Spirit. And going to bash it, up. So the supports are going to be free food for him, even some of the cores as well are going to struggle with man fighting. Or maybe this could be the item. Y Yatora has gone for the Silver yeah. Edge, so, so maybe this like is going to be something that can uh, potentially enable them to kill Arteezy in the fights. Yeah, and it's not like a great hero to build MKB on, so I actually really like the Silver Edge pickup here. It's just much better stats. 52 damage, 35 attack speed. Uh, gives you like an next like... <laughs> yeah, they're, they're kind of doubling and now tripling down on invis and whatnot. Like, so, you know, sentries and gem have insane value, but, you know, you lose a gem and suddenly you can't buy a new one. It's it's pretty hard to maintain vision at all times. Not to mention Slark is like one of the best heroes to deward with, so... Puts pressure on the Shopify side to always have that detection. Um, they want another fight here from Shopify. They're going to try and charge up towards the triangle, though. Spirit were there a couple of seconds ago. They're going to vacate away from the air. They're moving down towards the bottom outpost area of the map. It might be there in time, though, for this wisdom room. <laughs> Seems to be something they're thinking of snagging. Everything in their own. We'll see. Who ends up My taking it? Regeneration! But maybe Arteezy would to get closer towards the 20. Are they rifting? Dark rift for the other. Just for the wisdom rune. Right. <laughs> Gets it this time. They're all out. Yeah. There's a. Watcher they had to dress as well, but no, they're, they're good to go here. They've kind of controlled both those wisdom runes, but. While that was going on, they were kind of sticking as five. Spirit were just kind of elsewhere farming the map, getting like maybe a thousand more gold in terms of their lead. So it wasn't like a you know bit of XP going the way of the Underlord, but overall, Spirit just thinking about that hey. next team fight. Oh, skills off the mark and awkward sight and initiation. They're still gonna try and follow through. Arbic will get blown up. RP 
Ravens defensively just to hold RTZ down inside the BKB, but he's still in fighting shape. And look at the cleave. Yatoru is going to be cautious. The depth shot's going to be activated. Spirit will have enough time to be able to react, but over to the right side. They're making the attempt over towards Flies. Chris the Maiden. In and out they go. An easy couple of kills from either side to find, but you definitely say Spirit are the happy ones with getting that big kill onto our beds, Leshrak. Yeah. Anytime they jump left, these fights just go perfectly. The, the smoke screen just obliterating any and all saves. And we're seeing the PA kind of lacking the ability to kind of lock on and kill some of these heroes just because Shopify's draft really lacks some lockdown here. Like the Pit of Malice and the, the CM can't reliably use Frostbite and spells because anytime the, the CM shows, she's just dying. Like you can't run in and cast Frostbite. So it's really up to Arteza to go on someone and lock them down himself, which is why he's gone for this Basher, looking to upgrade to an Abyssal Blade because he's looking at how these fights go and he's just getting kited. So he needs as much what? lockdown as possible. You gotta be cautious. Doesn't seem like they have everyone at the moment from Spirit. So they're pretty hesitant about making this jump. Radiant's top tower uh, is under attack. How big do we feel like it was just the RP onto Arteezy in that last in that last fight? Because he did waste like a decent chunk of his BKB, and they could reposition after the kind of rougher initiation. Do we do we feel like that's something Collapse needs to be further considering with the upcoming fights and just holding Arteezy down with that RP? Yeah, I, I think it was it's good enough. I mean, he's definitely the prime target to get, even if you're not killing him. If you can, like you say, buy time like to for his BKB duration, or even just let your, you know, Ricky and Slark kill other people while he, while Arteezy gets control, because PA is the kind of hardest kill to go for, so much happier trying to kill the, the squishies and other targets. Shopify always seemed to be pretty on point with his tormented yeah, timing, yeah. so instantly looking to pick that one up and making a play off the back of that. Lala did Toro. They're going to see Arbit and the pop crit smoke as well. Radiant are all behind them. They're still ready to fight. Perhaps he's in the rooms. He's just waiting for that perfect opportunity. The mate that go on to clip, looking to take the techies out of the equation. They're stuck inside the river, though. This is an awkward spot for them to be. They're going to be forced to leap away. Lol under the cover of the BKB. He's going to be okay for the moment as well. They just want an all-out retreat, considering crit did just buy back. If the wraparound though from Yutoro, he's going to try and find the angle. Meanwhile, Arteezy just assassinates Mira. So a four for five for Spirit, an awkward start. It's a call for them. Do they force the issue here? This is Ed Skyrath, Chopper by. Yep. Well, it's a great angle. They've got a great ward to play with. They've got a glimpse of collapse, I think, in the tree line. They're going to be able to stop his blink towards Arteezy, though. Phantom Strike gets the separation. Another great RP, but there's just no follow-up. Collapse is forced to try and skew it to the left side. He's going to be okay for the moment. Maybe there's a window for Yutori to get into the middle. Shadow Dance going to be able to cover him for the moment. You've got to keep eyes on Arbeth. This AoE damage could prove to be an issue. Yutori is still in fighting shape towards Arteezy. They go, they'll bring down the PA. In and out, the perfect fight from Team Spirit, considering to dance and there's just nothing Shopify are able to do against it. Oh, their plays are just perfect. Spirit looking incredible. Just the read from them to never heavily commit. In and out they go, wanting these long drawn out fights and they're doing a great job to always continue to kite Shopify. Yeah, just poke and prod, ignore the Underlord specifically, don't fight around the Firestorm and the Pit of Malice. It just does too much damage, the percent based damage, and you know, just, just pull them in. Like, Shopify can't really, they can't disengage because you get to chase them down. You have Ricky and Sark, but at the same time, you know, they can't force a fight because they lack that clear catcher initiation. Underlord, Leshrac, PA, there's no clear way to, like, you know, jump on someone. Same with the supports. Like, you know, it's a CM. It's not like you've got, like, a, let's say a Rubik or, you know, the Earthshakers. There's no, like, easy stun to just guarantee a kill when you go in. So, this execution for Shopify is really difficult when it comes to securing these kills. That is looking for a target. I don't the run into anyone, though. Okay, two towers going to end up going down. Bottom tower has and Spirit going to be happy with that. 9,000 net worth lead has been accumulated. They've still got their tormentors to look clean as well. Shopify just, I mean, it seems like a couple of their cores are struggling to have some impact inside some of the fights. Yes, we've, we saw Ar Artesian what he can do with a DD, but I mean, also the less track as well. Arbit was in the middle of all of that, but just didn't really feel his impact prior. Yeah, 
he's in general this game it feels like he's he's struggling to find a way to pack things he's got to side the vice now so get some extra control i've kind of harped upon the lack of you know catching ability to kill heroes the site does help fix that but the, the problem for Abed is he's you know target numero uno in all these fights so this is not a really it's not a defensive line that's going to help keep him alive and we're seeing often in these fights that he gets jumped caught in the smoke screen and just melts so the plate melt's going to help once he gets it but he needs to be very careful with his positioning interesting things and importantly lol he's, he's going for this new item in the dispersal so no idea if it's good or not we're, we're about to find out and another thing clap's got the ag shard but i mean he's only got one level in the shockwave so not a lot of hot, not a lot of value out of that as you know, your Taurus should be able to find a freebie on to crit maybe maybe not what's going on this is kind of messy a couple of die heroes down bottom your Taurus actually got a tp out okay <laughs> Сейчас поиграем. I'm hunting. Uh, still around. He's going to come back to the portal. An easy kill. A little bit of stacks for them to work with. Arte oh, oh, where does he run? They're just completely disconnected. Arteezy, he's going to pop out a blur. Jumped out of the south. This is so awkward. Oh, no. Arteezy. Two down, drag back in the Mystic Flare. More stacks for your Tora. What a mess. And our Sableye. Did you take the Rift? Where'd it go? <laughs> he's just, he's heading back. He's hiding. He's, he's entering turtle mode. You're up against an Aegis Slark now who's building up more and more stacks. And the itemization into this Silver Edge has paid off in spades. He's got the Aghanim Scepter plus Bloodthorn to go with it. So plenty of answers to the PA evasion. And... They're in full control now, it feels like, on the Team Spirit side. Just move around the map, getting kills at will. And it's going to be a, a tough ask for Shopify to turn this one around. You know, they had this really scary PA who was ahead of everyone net worth, but then a couple bad force fights, and suddenly things have flipped the script, and Shopify are the ones in complete control with a 16k gold lead. At least for them, their high ground defense is pretty solid with the, the fire storm and just their spam from afar. So even though with the, the lead they've been able to build up here from Spirit, they probably won't be able to bring down any towers, even though that Arteezy is dead. So Dyer's bottom tower is yeah, under it's still going to be a lot of map to play with. You've got night time for another 3 minutes 30. So have fun getting outside your base. Definitely the big thing, you know, Slark Ricky Core is like, they're two heroes that kind of do the same thing, but they're just both two heroes that seem very strong right now. I, you know, Slark specifically great against the Underlord. This game, Ricky just, you know, generally speaking, a good assassin hero. Much better on this new patch with the, the new shard. And because they've got these two cores, yeah, going high ground is just, even with an Aegis, is not really an option. You've always got to kind of kill heroes first, then hit the buildings when they're dead. So. Even with Aegis, they're not going to force any kind of a high ground. They're just kind of waiting for Shopify to come and take the next big fight. But obviously Shopify, no interest in doing that, at least while there's an Aegis in hand. Maybe they go for some kind of desperation move, because you can't just sit in your base forever. Like, it's a 17, 18k gold lead right now. If you sit in your base waiting for them to push high ground, they'll just never push high ground. Like, if you're a spirit, you are happy with this game going 45, 50, 60 minutes. Because guess what? You're going to have a 40k, 50k gold lead if all... All Spotify or Shopify are doing is sitting in their base. So, at some point, you know the way Shopify have to play this is like, okay, guys, we got to make a move. We got to smoke out. We got to make a move. We're being our farm. We're gonna lose this game. It's up to us to make. Like the onus is on them to make the first move here. Well, they feel like their lanes are in a good enough position to be able to make a play. It just has expired as well. I see Tori looking to try and claim the outpost, but of course they have no other wards to play with on Shopify. This map is completely dark for them. Very much a desperation smoke, like you say. Your opponents have full map control, full vision. And you're just hoping that you find the right target with this five-man smoke, and it's very telegraphed too. If you're spirit, you're like, huh, no one's farming this mid-wave that's at the tier three tower. Like, what's what's going on? We don't see a single enemy hero, and you also know the only way your opponents get back in this game is by going for these five-man desperation smokes. So, you know, any Dota player worth their salt is going to see this, see this coming, and it's just whether or not, you know... Get it connected. Uh, this is a classic fly thing, though. Just stand on a high ground on top of your ward. Artiz is going to run to the low ground, though, so it is kind of not falling the job. Toro's going to try and poke, get some reactions out. They're going to get confirmation of where Shopify are playing. 
Seems low, but of course it's very awkward for Shopify to start with their heroes. Flies whipped them back into place. He's like, guys, we... <laughs> yeah, this high ground, we're not leaving. Let, let, we're staying here. Don't, don't go low ground, nothing like that. Position. Has been also, the Sable Light. Dyer's top oh tower God. is under attack. <laughs> oh, so aware. So aware, yeah, just so scared as well. No way. Don't do it. Radiance oh, oh, no, collapse! He got him! The Mantle Illusion, I believe, got the vision of Sable Light in the tree line. And, and now that's the pickoff they needed. Just needed one. Didn't matter who. Now up the high ground, they can go. Chop. They're not leaving, though. <laughs> They're not leaving. Dyer's top tower is under attack. BKB's gonna be activated, he'll turn to collapse over to the right side, but RTZ just doesn't have enough damage. And as soon as the PA is killed off, the team fight is just in shambles afterwards. Sableye tries to TP out, but it'll be stopped short. And that's gonna be a dieback for him and everyone else is chased further and further inside their own territory. It's time for Team Spirit to pillage the base and well they want the kills before they deal with the objectives. Four down and in the end that's gonna be game called as well. So for our last series of the night, we've got another 1-1 tie. Dyer's middle back. Victory! Dyer's middle back.